A couple of years ago, I upgraded the TV antenna on my RV to a Weingard Razor Automatic. This is a fully automatic antenna and can sweep the sky the full 360 degrees of azimuth and will seek the strongest signal that it finds. The control panel for the antenna allows you to see what direction the antenna ended up in, the number of stations it found, and has manual controls to change the direction if needed. Unfortunately, the booster supply for the old antenna was mounted on the ceiling and mounting a new control panel in that position is kind of awkward if you want to use it. So I want to 3D print a new housing for the antenna control panel that makes it easier to use. Truth be told, this is originally the project I had in mind when I bought the 3D printer back in 2019, but it seemed other projects got into the way of this build. And since it is a bit of a complex build, it took a while to decide what kind of mount I wanted and how best to do it. I ended up with a fairly complex mount that puts the control panel at a 15 degree position from vertical and made the bezel rotatable at 30 degree increments for the best viewing angle. To cut down on the number of supports required for printing, I ended up having to make five parts. The anchor plate is a backing plate that goes in the ceiling and clamps the ceiling in conjunction with the base plate. So essentially it sandwiches the ceiling between those two plates. The anchor plate may not be needed if there is a standard electrical junction box in the ceiling because I put screw holes in the base plate that would attach to a standard outlet box. The turret connects to the bezel and can be adjusted for 360 degrees of rotation at 30 degree increments. The bezel holds the antenna control and on-off switch. And finally, the top cap was made as a separate print to keep from having a lot of waste from having to print a support structure which would have been required in the printing process if I made it all one piece. And as we watch the parts print, I will tell you that you can get the STL files from a website at the link that I'll provide here. Well, I'm done with the 3D printing of all the pieces. We have, first of all, the anchor, which goes on the very bottom. And then we have the base, which is actually a spacer. That goes on next. Then the turret. And then the main bezel. And there's a spot for the on-off switch. So I can adjust a 360 degree arc. When you do a 3D print, it doesn't come out all nice and smooth, but rather it's kind of rough, especially with a hobbyist grade one like I have. And I can take my fingernail and rub across it, and you can hear how rough it is. And I don't do this on every project, but only ones that will show. I start out first with about a 120 grit sandpaper, then go up to 600 grit, wet and dry. And then I use this model filler, filling any of the real rough spots. And you can hear well, it's much smoother. Typically when you do a 3D print, you print with an infill. And what that actually means is that the inside of the part is hollow. And in this part, I used a 30% infill, which means that 70% of the inside of this is air. And there are several reasons to do that. In the first place, it makes the part much lighter. It's much faster to print. And you don't use as much material. The downside is that the wall thickness in here is actually about one millimeter so when you're sanding this if you're too aggressive you could go through the outer wall and into the void what i typically do is knock down the rough spots with the sandpaper and then that's why i use a filler so i don't have to go any farther than necessary and we can look at the build process layer by layer if we go all the way down to the bottom layer the first five layers are solid and then you can see as we continue to build, we have a void in here. And this is the 30% infill. So 70% of this is empty. And you can see the side walls here also have a void. Again, the one millimeter skin on the inside and outside. Also note that this is almost a 10 hour print. If we were to make this a completely solid part, this would probably be in excess of 24 hours. 
And if there is enough interest in how to 3D print RV parts, then I can work on a set of videos on what printer to buy, how to set up your printer, and how to 3D print your own parts. And after a couple coats of semi-gloss paint, this is what we end up with. And by the way, I noticed in the last update to Windows 10 that they now have something called Print 3D, where this is basically a slicer, but you can also order prints with it. I'm not vouching for this. I have no idea where the prints go to be printed. I just ran across this, so I'm going to provide this as information. And remember, we have five parts, and just the bezel itself is $129.83 to print. You can buy a 3D printer like the one I have for under $300. So why would you spend $130 bucks for one print out of five that you need when you can buy the whole printer for about the same price? I'm going to be installing an on-off switch with a light. It can come in one of three different styles, either an incandescent light or an LED with or without a current limiting resistor. And you specify what you want at time of purchase. All LEDs require some form of current limiting, and in the simplest sense, as accomplished with a resistor. And if you buy this with a resistor built in, then it'll be the proper value, of course. And if you buy it without the resistor, you'd use Ohm's Law to find out what the resistor's value is. We bought this already with a current limiting resistor. On the back, we have three terminals. This is a single pole, single throw switch. But if you'll notice, we have two silver terminals and a copper terminal. The copper terminal is the ground side of the LED or incandescent light. So this goes to ground, and then these two go to the switch. The center terminal is for the device that is switched on and off. And the edge terminal is for supply voltage. If you get them reversed, the indicator will be on all the time, regardless if you turn it on or off. And I have a 12 volt power supply. I'm going to connect the negative to the copper terminal. And I'm going to connect positive to the supply terminal. And you see, when I turn it on, the light is on. When I turn it off, the light is off. But if I connect it to the center terminal, see it's on all the time. Since the control panel is going to be mounted in the ceiling in my bedroom, I think the LED is going to be just a bit too bright. So I want to tone down the intensity a little bit on the LED. And this is easy to do by adding a second current limiting resistor to the first one in series. And both resistors combined will determine the brightness of the LED. However, due to the non-linearity of how your eye sees light, it can be a bit difficult to select a correct value of resistor. And so, we're just going to use a resistor substitution box. And if you don't have one of these, this is a really handy thing to have. All this is, is just a bunch of different resistors that I can dial in from 10 ohms all the way up to 1 mega ohm. And we simply connect the resistor substitution box in series with a negative lead of the LED. 10 ohms makes no difference as we go up in value. Here's 680 ohms. And once we get to 1000, we start to get dim. And you can see... So I'm going to do maybe 3,300 ohm. You can get this resistor substitution box for about 15 bucks as a soldering kit, or about $30, I think, already assembled. If you're trying to learn soldering, this is a good first kit. And I do have a 3,300 ohm resistor for my parts bin. Now you can see this might be a little bit convoluted in trying to install. What we would have to do is to put this resistor in a piece of heat shrink with a negative lead going to ground. But you know, I like to do things in kind of a professional way. So I did design and have a circuit board built. And this circuit board was about $5 for three. And the place I buy them from, you have a minimum quantity of three. It's certainly a lot easier to connect everything up than if we just did it without the board. So I have 12 volts and ground coming in here from the RV. And then the switch will mount on the back side and then we have the leads that actually go to the control panel. And the resistor goes right here. And then we'll solder that in. Since we have this board, I have a little bit extra room. So we might as well add some more stuff to it. I have here a TVS diode, which stands for a transient voltage suppressor. 
And I put these in all of my DC circuits because I am under the opinion that not only does the AC need surge suppression, DC does as well. And I've done a white paper on making the case for DC surge suppression. And I'll put it up there in the corner, a link to it, and you can read that if you want to. And the fuse is there to protect the circuit if the surge suppressor goes bad. And by the way, if you want to build one of these, I have uh, also on my website, again, in the, the corner, I'll have uh, instructions on how to do that, the build materials, all the parts required, where to buy the boards. All right, this is done. And this is marked LED terminal pointing to this terminal. So that means that the copper side must go to there. So we can now bring back our bezel and now we can install the switch permanently. Now, of course, this bezel is going to be upside down. So we want to orient the switch. When we flip it up, it will be on. And that just snaps in. Then on the inside, we take our board and again, pay attention to our LED terminal. We have the brass connector on top. So this board fits in like this and it just press fits onto the terminals. And now we're at the point where we're going to install the new bezel into the RV. And to do this, I'm going to use my hat cam, which is basically a GoPro mounted on a hat. So the first task is I'm going to disconnect the TV in the arms so it's easier to get up into here. Next, I removed everything from the old installation. And this orange enclosure is a low voltage enclosure. And if you have one of those, you don't need the anchor 3D printed part. But since I already made it, I'm going to pull this out. I then fitted the anchor above the ceiling, the base plate under the ceiling, and then sandwiched the ceiling between the two. After feeding all the cables through, the next step was to mount the turret with the bezel attached to the ceiling and securing it with 4mm screws. And now we have to reconnect everything including the coax and the power wires, then button it up. After making all of the coax connections, I insulated all the barrels with electrical tape so it would not short out on the switch circuit board. And here are a couple still photo shots of how it came out. I think it really looks nice. I also found this miniature 75 ohm coax that I'm going to use from the control panel to the bedroom TV. Just makes for a nicer installation. You may have noticed the TV backer location is not where I put the TV mount. The TV backer location was off by about 6 inches. I guess it was close enough day at the factory when they built my RV. And here's the final installation. And you can see that the control panel is much easier to see and use. So I'm happy with it.